Hi, my name is Brandon and I'm an alcoholic and addict in recovery. Today I want to read some out of Recovery 2.0 by Tommy Rosen. And the section is about what he calls the addiction story. And this is a concept that makes a lot of sense, but one I haven't heard talked about that often. So I'm going to read what he says about it and then share a little bit about my own addiction story and why rewriting that story had such an important impact on my ability to start the road to recovery. Tommy says, there is an extraordinary force that helps perpetuate all addiction. I call it the addiction story. This is the story you tell yourself that builds the case for continuing your addictive behavior. He goes on later to say, to be stuck in our addiction story is no different from being possessed by a demon who has taken control of the system. The demon does not have your best interests in mind. It just wants to feed itself. It uses all manner of tricks and tools to continue to force the system to support its agenda. It co-ops your mind and puts it to good use by creating the most vivid, splendid, and realistic story, one so intricately woven that you will die to uphold it. Thus, the machinery of denial is constructed. Denial, the constant vigilance to not know what you know. It takes an unbelievable amount of energy to keep it up. I'll stop right there to say that when I read this, I related to it in a way that I hadn't thought about before. I had, uh, in my own addiction, as I'm sure that many people watching this can identify with, I had an incredible sense of denial. The amount that I was drinking, for example, I knew was the was so much that uh, I, I was very likely to die from the amount I was drinking. That if I continued to drink that amount, I would die from it. I also knew that I was engaging in addictive behavior when I drank the amount that I drank. And yet somehow I wove this story and convinced myself that one day... Before I did too much damage, I would stop. Now, I couldn't tell you how I would know that I hadn't done too much damage. I couldn't tell you how I would stop. I had a little bit of fantasy in my mind that having a child, once, I, once my wife and I had a child, that magically the desire for drinking as much as I was drinking would be lifted from me. Uh, spoiler alert, that didn't happen. So uh, it's it, these stories that we tell ourselves about uh, what we're doing and the denial that's embedded in those that starts to make it so difficult to stop the behavior. So he goes on to tell a little bit of his own story. He says, once I found marijuana, I began to create my addiction story, gathering up evidence to convince myself and everyone else that my story was true. My story's basic premise was that marijuana was a necessary ingredient for me to succeed and enjoy my time in this world. Now, this was a key part of my story for everything I became addicted to. Cigarettes, alcohol, marijuana, and then eventually towards the end of my addiction, anxiety and sleeping pills. And I really had th these intricate stories in my head about how life would not be worth living without these things. And you might hear people who, who say things like, I mean, I know a saying that I've heard a lot before is, you know, a day without wine is like a day without sunshine. And I took those kinds of uh, sentiments and really used them to construct this story that a day without getting messed up, a day without getting inebriated or stoned was not worth it. That was a waste of a day. And that made it incredibly difficult to try any kind of moderation. Uh, because in my head, this story that I had created said, no, the way you want to spend time, the way you need to spend time is by seeking intoxication 
and by getting stoned, getting drunk. And eventually, at the end of my uh, addiction, that became, you need these things in order to continue living. You cannot operate without these things. And the anxiety and depression created from that is fortunately what eventually led me to a point where I admitted I needed outside help. I couldn't do it myself and got checked into a facility that could actually help me. But I too had a story much like Tommy's where I told myself that, you know, my cigarette smoking made me look cool. I couldn't, I, at one point I remember, I can't, I can't talk to people on the phone without having a cigarette in my mouth. I always had to be outside smoking when I talked to someone on the phone. And I remember, uh, I would have to, uh, force myself to take breaks because otherwise I would just chain smoke. And by the end of the call, I just felt terrible. Um, and the same thing with alcohol and marijuana. Those things made me feel, I felt like I needed them in my life in order to be the things that I wanted to be. And that was to be a cool person, to be accepted by my peers, to be accepted by you know society in general, and also to be at ease in the world. And I couldn't imagine, you know, I, I told myself that these drugs allowed me to see the world in a way that I couldn't see otherwise. And that's why they were important. And I constructed all these complex stories around why people um, in for it, marijuana is a great example. I constructed all these stories about why people had uh, why it had become illegal and why people had, you know, stomped it down and while those stories might have been true uh it didn't mean that i needed to develop addictive behavior towards the drug now what is behind the real story is the actual story of why we get addicted and here's how tommy writes his his actual story is i am not getting what i need in my life and i don't know how to get it I feel this world has let me down. No one seems to recognize or understand me. I feel confused, insecure, angry, and sad, like a victim of circumstances beyond my control. I do not trust that the earth and its inhabitants are ever going to provide me what I need in this life. Therefore, I'm going to take whatever means, whatever I need, by whatever means necessary. I am building a world that makes sense to me. In this world, marijuana or insert any substance or behavior there. Marijuana is king. It brings me a sense of ease, joy, and laughter. It makes me feel cool and different, and it gives me a sense of myself that I love. It has given me a community of peers who get me and the ability to attract girls. I have found something that genuinely makes me feel better, and I don't want it to be taken away ever. I will do whatever I can to maintain my story that this is the correct path for me because if I don't, the truth is that I have no idea how I will get through life without it. I am not enough. I feel powerless in this world. My heart is broken. Those last three lines I identify with so much. Uh, I have no idea how to get through life without it. I remember thinking, if my doctor ever came to me and said, when I was in the middle of my addiction, I remember thinking if a doctor ever came to me and said, you need to quit drinking today or you will die in six months, I wouldn't know how to respond. And how terrible is that, that I, I'm in a position where I'm not sure whether six more months of drinking is better than a lifetime of sobriety. That's a terrible situation to be in. Um, and so the last thing that he says is given this story and all the intricacies of its tenets, it is not hard to see why it is so difficult to break through the armor plated walls of denial. It is damn near impossible to disprove a story to someone who still wants or needs it to be true. So for, for us to start on a road to recovery, we have to break down our story, figure out what it is. 
and then start to take it apart. And that's what I learned how to do when I was in treatment. I was in treatment with people who taught me how to look at the story that I had told myself and then become more realistic about the actual story that I was telling myself. And the truth was that I had become dependent on substances that I didn't need in order to live life. And in fact, in order to live the life that I wanted, I needed to not be engaged in using those substances. It was as simple as that. And once I started asking a few questions and figuring out some of the details, it became clear that a life of sobriety and then the supporting program of recovery were actually going to be the things that gave me what I had been trying to get out of drugs all along. Drugs gave me a illusory idea of what life could be like. Uh, I, I thought that the relaxation and the ease that I initially felt when I started using drugs, I thought that that's what I needed in life and that drugs could give it to me. The truth is that it was artificial. It, it was never real. I didn't get that. You know, I didn't start becoming the cool, calm, collected guy that I thought marijuana made me. Until I stopped using marijuana and I started a program of spiritual growth in recovery. So deconstructing our stories of addiction, big part of the process, a uh, big part of my process. And I'm really glad that Tommy included this, this section because I'd never quite heard it put that way. That's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow with more. Have a good one.